Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, so this is uh, just the first part of my research on animal sanctuaries in which I explore how humans and other animals live together. And uh, here by animal sanctuaries, I mean communities of human and non-human animals in which the humans care for the non-humans. And uh, more specifically, I focus on sanctuaries for formerly farmed or exploited animals. And this part of the research uh, looks at representation and uh, visual language and more specifically photography uh, within sanctuaries. And my research is based in Romania. And this is, these are all photographs taken by Andrea Balaurea from the Spirit Animal Sanctuary. Uh, the sanctuary is composed of um, 10, 10 dogs, uh, 10 horses and 18 uh, billy goats and two humans. So this is a picture of uh, Nikushor, one of the humans, and Asia, one of the horses he saved. Uh, just look at it for a moment to take it in. So the structure of my presentation is that I will say my arguments, my methodology, position, some theory, and then reiterate my arguments and some risks regarding the arguments that I make. Um, so my arguments are, I, there are three. One, uh, portraiture is a way of representing personhood in non-human and human animals alike. Uh, my second argument is that photography can be a process of engagement that enables agency in humans and non-human animals. And my third argument is that photography can be a way of centering non-human animals in animal advocacy. So, um, the methodology for this research is qualitative. I did uh, semi-structured interviews and I did content analysis, uh, written and visual of over one year of Facebook posts. And uh, in the future, I plan on doing participant observation and multi-species ethnography when um, it will be possible with the virus. Um, so my position, and I think it's really important to state my position beforehand, uh, is that I'm trying to, to really do engaged research that is activist research, non-extractive research, meaning that it is engaged in the animal liberation movement and meaning that I want to give back to the humans and the non-humans that are involved in my research. Um, secondly, obviously I use an anti-speciesist framework starting from the position that there is no good reason to assume human supremacy over all other animals and that all animals have intrinsic value. And thirdly, I come from sociology and um, here uh, I, I engage in a kind of sociology for the animals quoting Cutworth, uh, meaning a critical sociology that should be a challenge to the intersected dominations of all the beings on this planet we inhabit. Um, okay, so sanctuaries are theorized, animal sanctuaries are theorized in multiple ways. Usually they are looked at as spaces. Uh, so in this sense, I found very helpful the research of Donaldson, Wilcox and Blattner, and especially the way they look at animal agency within the community of a sanctuary. And uh, I quote, uh, we understand agency as the expression, as the expression or manifestation of a subjective existence. Agency means affecting the world in ways that reflect the subject's desires or will. Um, and uh, Elena Zabrel's uh, um, thesis was also re is re also really good place to learn about animal sanctuaries and the movement from a U.S. perspective. And uh, his argument uh, that uh, sanctuaries and uh, sanctuary caregivers, what they do is they unmake animal property. is really relevant from the sense animals exist as property at, outside of sanctuaries and within sanctuaries this status of property is trying to become undone and uh, sanctuaries work at recognizing animal personhood. And uh, of course, also the research of Donaldson and Kimbika regarding farmed animal sanctuaries is really important. And um, the, the, this sanctuary, uh, the spirit animal sanctuary that I uh, looked at 
uh, fits uh, partly the refuge and advocacy model that they talk about, which means having a duty of care, support for species typical flourishing, recognition of individuality, non-exploitation, non-perpetuation, and awareness and advocacy. But it also mixes with their idea of intentional community in the sense that it is very specifically understood as a relation. Like this is a quote from Niku Shor, that our sanctuary is our way of life. It's not a place, it's a, a relationship. So my first argument is, animal, is that animal personhood can be done through portrait photography, and this has already been documented by uh, many other people. So Kerry Cronin writes about how important visual culture is in the early animal welfare movement, and uh, that is an important site of recognition of animal voice and agency. And uh, here, um, Marcus writes that, I quote, to foster empowerment and avoid hopelessness, it is vital to place greater emphasis on the aesthetic value and emotional impact of positive imagery. Because in, the, um, in animal advocacy, negative imagery and imagery of animal abuse is, is uh, very, um, um, it happens a lot, a lot more often than positive imagery. So, um, Zamit, Lucia and Kalov have this very specific argument of how one can use the, the techniques of portraiture to foster, foster a sense of personhood, individuality, individuality and um, kinship. And they, uh, they write about uh, the fact that um, there is a visual culture that portrays animals as wild, free creatures are separate from a nature and in conflict with human culture. And they say that this is counterproductive while a uh, portraiture can foster kinship. And this is furthermore shown in Kalov's research with uh, students in which uh, she, they have been shown portraits of animals in, uh, in this portraiture technique that uses studio, even studio lightning. And uh, the students afterwards conceptualized animals more easily as conscious beings and emotional and as having emotions. And this is a quote from Andrea about how portraits are doors towards knowledge, understanding, depth, and appreciation. So this is one of the portraits of one of their really goats, Sandy. Sandy is one of those goats whose affection is in your face. He's really, really affectionate. Uh, she, she stressed this a lot, but what I think is really important in a sanctuary setting is that animals can choose and they have a lot of agency about how and when they engage. And for example, they have a lot of choices regarding other things in their lives. So for example, Sandy loves to eat from inside the hay crate. And Andrea was saying that um, um, she wants to build a bigger hay crate because now of course he's bigger than a few months ago. And so, so he can still fit inside the new hay crate. This is Benjamin, one of the first horses Nikushor saved in 2017. <sighs> So if you look at this portrait, you see how it really brings him out as an individual, but he's also very much belonging in the environment. And uh, what I want to say about him is that he was, uh, he had a really tough life before being rescued. He was abused a lot. And what Nikushor told me is that um, when he found the, the freedom that they enabled for him, um, he became really aggressive for some time until he got used to uh, humans and to other horses and now he's really kind. My second argument is that photography is a process of engagement and um, this, uh, this can be done in multiple ways, but I think what is important to say it is a process of engagement for both the photographer and the person being photographed. So I would like to refer to Isa Leshko's uh, photography. She is a photographer who for nine years, she photographed all the animals uh, living in sanctuaries. And this process changed her because she had been a vegetarian prior to the project. And during the project, when photographing so many uh, old animals and especially photographing an old bull, she realized she would become vegan. Because of course, in the dairy industry, uh, male calves are killed and this old bull would have would have not been alive had he not been saved in, in particular ways. So 
Um, going back to photography, animals often relate to humans and even to the camera with curiosity and curiosity is a way of manifesting agency. And in photographing in a sanctuary setting, as I already said, animals can choose whether or not to engage with the camera or with the person. But what is really important about these particular photographs and is that these animals are engaging with Andrea and they know her very well because she lives with them all the time. So what we are seeing, I think, is this part of this relationship, how they look at her. This is what we are seeing right now. And also now, this is many of them just having a siesta and looking at her because she is there all the time. They can choose to look at her or they can choose to ignore her and just feel safe around her. This is Nikushora Nestor. I will read the quote. When I connect to an animal, I feel the whole world stopping and my mind is freed from any thought. I am there present. I feel their emotions, their heartbeats, their needs. I have so much to learn from them, from all of the animals. They are the only ones who can truly teach us. And this is Andrea, the photographer, and Lucien, one of the horses they saved uh, recently with the help of the online vegan community. And Another, another photograph that really captures so very well this intimacy and this relationship that can only be captured when, the, when this relationship is there and when the photographer is invisible enough for both of the persons in the photograph to become this intimate. And my third argument is that photography is a visual language and it can be used to center other animals in animal advocacy in many ways. So for example, that means that we should, we as humans should ally, should do the work of allying better and should not only be talking or speaking without directly engaging. And photography can be a way of doing this engagement. So Andrea talks about observation as a form of respect, of giving your time and of giving your care, of holding back the case of the animal, and of course respecting if they do not want to be photographed. And she, she says that portraits are a door to the internal universe of another being, regardless of whether they are human or non-human animal. Um, this is one of the horses and one of the dogs they had saved. And I will just read this because it's still important. I feel like I could speak about a lot about photography, but anything I would say would be less than what I wrote and photographed. So there is a lot to take in about what we can see and feel in, in the different languages in which we engage in. Uh, this is just a really playful picture that, oh, again, outside of sanctuary settings or other settings, it would be really hard to capture, I think. And this is, this is another picture that shows how, well, you see what it shows. Um, I think also it's, it's really important to um, think about some of the risks that come with uh, the arguments that I'm making. So one of them is seeing sanctuaries as some kind of solutions. And this is, of course, what not, it's not what I'm arguing. I think sanctuaries are places where we can learn from and we can, we can learn from the humans and from the non-humans how to better live and how to better have these relationships. And I view them as places of transition to a non-anthropocentric society. Secondly, I think there's always the risk of reproducing the human gaze and viewing animals for us, again, for our pleasure and our pleasure of consuming images of them. But I think it's really important to focus on the fact that we, we are living in this current historical moment of extreme exploitation of non-human bodies. So photographing animal abuse is still work that needs to be done and photographing animal joy, freedom and focusing on this personhood is still essential to involving and centering animals in animal advocacy. And thirdly, there's also this risk of anthropocentric portraiture. Uh, so from an anti-species position, portraiture might risk of showing other animals who are more like us because they have faces and focusing on faces that are like us and recognizing personhood from an anthropocentric position. But I think this can be further addressed with uh, maybe lots of care, working directly with animals and trying to understand exactly what they want to say and how they are in themselves as much as possible. 
And I don't think we can only speak or write about them without them. As I, as I already said, we must really find better ways to be better allies in the struggle for liberation. So uh, I will just say my arguments once again that portraiture is a way of representing personhood. This is Rain, one of the horses that was born on the sanctuary. Uh, and that photography can be understood as a process of engagement that engages both the photographer and the subject. This is Andrea and uh, Swan. It's a really intimate moment again. Uh, photography can be appropriate for animal advocacy because it centers specific animals as subjects and they cannot become abstract entities once again. And it also means engaging them with them directly through the process of photography and thus getting to know them. Photographing requires paying attention, giving time, and holding up someone's case, and having a relationship of safety. And it also means being able to be in the position to make visible gestures and moments and relationships that otherwise are missed. This is Nikushor with uh, the two recently saved uh, billy goats, whom were named Regan and Russell, in honor of uh, Regan Russell, uh, Regan Russell uh, the animal rights activist from Toronto. So uh, what I mean is uh, love is in the details. This is something that Andrea wrote in one Facebook post. And I think this is because within details, such as within details and photographic details, you start to notice this individuality, uniqueness and personhood. And making this physical, visible makes visible the, the intrinsic value of animals. Thank you.